I will make sure that I stay at home for our pregnancy test, just in case it's negative, because I don't want to be forced to grieve in a way that 102 members of this chamber decide it. In 2008, my husband was serving in the Wardak province in Afghanistan with the 101st Airborne. He completed 300 combat missions and his unit was fired upon every single day. During one of those missions, he was shot multiple times, including a gunshot to the lower abdomen. The bullet ricocheted off of the magazine on his pistol belt and ended up causing him great harm to his reproductive organs. But he kept serving his country, unaware of the implications he would face later in his life. We got married in 2017, and in 2019, we started trying to conceive our first child. After almost a year of no success, we went in for testing, and we learned that my husband was infertile due to the wounds he received in combat. Our only chance of having a baby would be if we complete it in vitro fertilization, or IVF, as hundreds and thousands of women have to do in our country and in our state. On February 14, 2020, we started our journey with me getting daily injections every day. After 24 injections over 12 days, nine visits to the doctor for blood work and ultrasounds, and two procedures, we were blessed to have not one, but two fertilized embryos. On February 28, 2020, we had both of those em embryos transferred into my womb. I was so excited and hopeful at the idea of finally becoming a mother something I've dreamed about since I was a little girl, like so many other women have dreamed about since they were little girls. On March 13th, 2020, 10 minutes before the governor announced he was shutting down the state due to COVID-19, we received a devastating phone call that my pregnancy test came back negative. I was completely and utterly devastated. Under this proposed legislation, had I learned that my pregnancy failed in the health facility, the facility would be mandated to force me to relive my loss by discussing the need for us to hold a ritual burial or cremation. At a time when I already felt like a failure, as a woman and as a wife, I would be forced to relive that trauma, not in a way that I decided, but in a way that 102 members of this chamber decided it was appropriate. Now let's fast forward to now. Next week on June 18th, after a year of failed fertility treatments, I'm beginning another round of IVF. I will go through dozens of painful injections, doctor's visits, driving back and forth from Harrisburg in order to do my job, hormonal changes and stress, but all of it will be worth it if we're successful. But now, if this legislation passes, my experience will be clouded in fear. If we transfer embryos, I will make sure that I stay at home for our pregnancy test, just in case it's negative, because I don't want to be forced to grieve in a way that 102 members of this chamber decide it. There is also a chance this time around that we could be successful and that we will have embryos left in a lab. We will be forced to pay large sums of money to keep those embryos, even if they may never be used, or to have a ritual burial or cremation. Because this legislation fails to address the difference between a fertilized egg and a viable fetus. This legislation is about taking away a family's choice to grieve and mourn in a way that works for them.
This legislation will strip me and my husband from the choice to grieve in a way that we see fit. It will force us to relive Brad's trauma as a combat veteran and the impact that experience has had on our lives over and over again.